you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for loving us, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We can't tell you enough times. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't tell you enough. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. If, I'm out of, if I seem out of breath, it's because I am. We've been worshiping this morning, have we not? Hallelujah. Amen. We've been giving God what he deserves. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Woo. Hallelujah. Woo. You can sit down if you want to, but if you want to run around the sanctuary, you can do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I can tell you this. I had the occasion to briefly at least uh, pay uh, listen to or watch last week's message. And I'll tell you what, I was blessed by the worship at the very beginning, at the opening. Oh, my goodness. It sounded like something was going on in here. Amen. Amen. I was blessed by that. And I assume everybody that was watching was blessed by that. And everybody that's watched it a second time and a third time has been blessed by that. Amen. Amen. Many times over. Hallelujah. Welcome to everybody online and everyone here in the sanctuary. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord yet again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm grateful to God for waking me up this morning and starting me on my way. Amen. I'm in my right mind. I have the activities of my limbs. I get to one more time serve God. I get to be obedient one more time. Hallelujah. I get to make him proud one more time. I get to praise him among the saints one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Somebody wishes they could be here. Somebody wishes they could praise him. Somebody doesn't have a voice. Somebody can't raise their hands. Somebody didn't walk into out of the bed this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thou art worthy, O Lord. Thou art worthy, O Lord. Thou art worthy, O Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Woo, God is good. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't have to get up here and say a little fancy thing like, let's have a praise break. Hallelujah. It can just happen spontaneously because God is just that good. He is just that good. And he loves it when we get together and raise our voices in sincerity about how good he is. Amen. Hallelujah. With an attitude of gratitude. Hallelujah. I'm still out of breath. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But again, I want to welcome everybody online. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and I want to give a special thanks this morning, a, a, a special shout out to Eduardo Lugo. Eduardo, you've been watching for quite a long time. You've been liking our post uh, on a regular basis. And I just want you to know, I don't know where you listen from, Eduardo. I think maybe the Rialto area, but I want you to know that your presence is noticed. I want you to know your support is appreciated. Amen. Hallelujah. And Brian Harold, I, I know I've been watching you. We see you out there, brother. We see you from Bakersfield. We want you to know that we love you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We appreciate the support. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We want the best for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And Deacon Glover, we see you out there, brother. Amen. Amen. We appreciate you continuing to log on. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And, enjoy, and, and join us. And we appreciate your continued support. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sounds like it's men's day today, huh? Eduardo and Brian and Melvin. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. And it may be Men's Day, but Jenny Perez, I, you've been on my mind, sister. I see you. We love you. We're watching you watch. Amen. We're watching you watch. And thank you so much for your continued support. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We uh, continue to pray for our brother Clint Martin, who's been struggling with some health issues. Amen. Uh, we love him. Uh, Clint was able to come and be with us in person one time a few months, several months back. Amen. He sat right over there. I'll never forget it. He was destined, he was in t determined to get here and to be with us in person. And so we, we intercede and we pray that the Lord will wrap his loving arms around him and give him healing if it's in his will, but never let him think he's alone. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I also want to uh, comment on the fact that the, the Morrises and Camarillo has been going through a tough week, but God has th brought them through that week victoriously. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. They've seen God's healing power, hallelujah, firsthand, hallelujah. They've seen God's loving arms firsthand, hallelujah, hallelujah. They've seen that God, he may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Got to experience what it's like when a bunch of people that just love each other and that love a person that's in need all come together and do all that they can. To, not, not just to pray, but to act. Not just to pray, but to do something about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we love you, Morris's. Amen. Hallelujah. I eventually am going to have a message this morning. <laughs> But I'm going to share with you just how blown away I was this past week as we had a few people specifically reach out to either myself or Pastor Trina or both to express the excitement that they have about what our ministry is doing and how blessed they are by these messages as they come across one person told me that that actually comes here in person. No names will be named. One person told me that actually watches online live. And another person told me that actually watches it afterwards. Amen. And another person told me that watches on YouTube. Amen. So let's give God the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anytime I get up here, I'm going to give my all. Anytime I get up here, it's going to be like it's for the championship. Anytime I get up here, it's going to be like it's the last shot and our life depend on it. But the pastor still needs encouragement. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And I hope that as I say that and I gain my encouragement, those of you who help make this possible, those of you who are invested, those of you who, who help make the services happen and the things behind the scenes. Hopefully you are also encouraged that we are making a difference. No matter how, what part you play, there are no big eyes and little U's in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We have different roles. Amen? Amen? We have different gifts, different talents. Amen? Amen? But our job is to be on post and what? On post, on post and what? On post. Amen. Hallelujah for Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. And we mentioned it earlier. I'm sorry, but uh, it's great to see Michelle back. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You all can't see her in internet land, but she's sitting there in, in her usual seat, and she is beautiful. Hallelujah. 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 She just had some good old time worshiping in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, today we will embark upon our part three or our third part of a three part series. What does that tell you? It's over today. Amen. Hallelujah. On called the creation series. And, and it is called the creation series because we're going over the actions of that we associate with creation done by God himself. Amen? Amen? But we cannot forget why this series exists. 
This series exists not so that we can go over creation yet again, amen, but there's something to that. There's some benefit there. But we did this particular series on creation because God said, and it's hit, he's the boss, I would have gone a whole different way. It's a good thing we're not going by me, amen? But he wanted to let his people know just how much love and attention and care that he has for us. Amen? Amen? Attention to the details, the things that you might think sometimes that don't matter to him. He told me a few weeks ago, tell my people, make sure that they can see clearly the love and care and attention that I extend toward them even when they don't feel it even when they don't know it. And I want you to use the creation events to explain it. I want you to help them see creation a different way. And so we've used some science. Amen for science. Hallelujah. Not to bring up science, but because science is merely the discovery of God and how God works. The things he put into place. That's all it is. It's fun to me now. And there's a couple of you all out there that think science is fun too. Especially when you can apply it to something in a way that you had no idea before. Amen. Especially when you love God and you love science and you get to put them together. That's a good old time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When you see in this dying world, this sinful place, when you get to see something that man uses to create atheists, and you can see that it really should create Christians. Amen. Hallelujah. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. And so this particular message, as we wrap up our creation series, in my mind, this is in Pastor Mike's mind, but I've been wrong so many times. This is a simple little message. Simple little message. Not a whole lot to it, but the, what there is to it is powerful and important. Amen. My job, and I pray that I am obedient. Last night as I was putting the finishing touches, or you could say early this morning, amen, on the message, God and I had a conversation, look, I'm not one of those, I don't talk, God doesn't talk to me every minute, hallelujah. But the way it ended was, Lord, I want to, what do you want to say? So I crossed some stuff out, okay, you don't want to say that, that's some good sounding stuff, yeah, but you don't want to say it. And so... My goal this morning is to be obedient. My job this morning is to transmit to you what God wants you to hear. And if you think you don't need to hear this, if you think that you've got it all together and you don't need to have this touch from God, then that's fine. I'm talking to the one or the two or the three that need it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. My goal this morning is for God to say, well done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, as we talk about creation, and we've had some fun doing it, have we not? God has created a lot of stuff. We had a big old blob, and then it went into a globe. Hallelujah. But it was inhospitable. It was not survivable by man or any other animal. Amen. And then we moved on in there and God started putting all the things in place so we can have our what? Our oxygen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we can have land to walk on. Hallelujah. Amen. So we can have some food to eat. Hallelujah. Amen. We got some phytoplankton in the ocean to help make some of that oxygen. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. We had some fun with science. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, he gave us the stars so we can navigate, so we can know all the seasons. He gave us the moon. He gave us the sun. He gave us the day. He gave us the night. He gave us a diurnal pattern. Hallelujah. Because he knew what we needed. Hallelujah. See, I got excited already. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And as we have gone through creation, we've gotten up to this point that, that there's just one thing missing. There's only one thing missing. What is that, saints? Uh, uh, say a little louder. I hear us. I hear man. I love both answers. Hallelujah. All of that creation that we've gotten right up on the precipice 
of man. Right up to the edge and the end of the preparation to get to man. And we finally get to us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And what I want you to know today, I've been telling you all along, but I'm going to reinforce it today. All of creation was building up to this. All, you should have shouted right there. See, you guys don't clap always at the right time. All of creation was building up to you. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Pastor Street. Hey, Amen. Natural leadership. Hallelujah. All of creation. God wasn't just checking a box. Okay. Build a blob, create a blob. Have your spirit hover over it. Create light. Separate the light from the dark and create day and night. And all the other steps, he wasn't just check, 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 just to do it. He wasn't just doing one thing and then another. He was doing it in a sp very specific order for a reason, with intention. And my hope, my prayer is that as we've learned those steps, that you can see God building up to man. And ultimately, none of that helps if you can't see in your own life that up to the moment that you came out of your mother's womb or her abdomen, if she had a C-section, there was a clock ticking. There was a drum roll. There was excitement and anticipation in heaven that you were on your way. You need to know that. Somebody needs to know that today. Somebody thinks their life has gone wrong because they weren't planned. You were planned. You were anticipated. You're not a nobody. You're all kinds of somebody to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All of creation up to this point was just setting the stage for what God was working his way up to. Do, the, does, do all the other things matter? Do the fish in the sea matter? Yes. Do the phytoplankton matter? Yes. Do the birds in the air matter? Yes. Do the animals that walk around the earth matter? Of course. But we're going to see this morning just how much God was building up to you and to you and to me. And it's not my interest per se that you know that, although I'm invested in it. God wants you to know that. We're not just learning about creation. We're not just incorporating science for science sake. God is trying yet one more way to reveal his character, Amen. to reveal his heart. Imagine the creator of the universe and rusty, dusty you and me, sinful, wrongdoing, you and me needing blood rubbed all over us for salvation, you and me. And he took the time. He stopped everything and said, I want you to tell my people how much I care. I want you to tell my people how much attention I pay. I want you to tell my people. <laughs> the creator, I said, of the universe, the one that we've been reading about, the actor, the one who flung all the stars into the sky, and now we know why. He stopped everything and said, I need you to know yet in another way, my heart. I need you to know. It, it, maybe somebody couldn't hear it all the other ways. Somebody needed to know that the God of creation actually didn't just look down on you, doesn't just know you, but literally lived in anticipation of your arrival. Hallelujah. 
And whatever your journey has been up to this point to get you to this day, he anticipated this moment in your life. And he wants to use you. Hallelujah. 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 I have a text. <laughs> Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26. I believe 25 is the last verse that we covered. And I have to tell you, I must admit, I'm, I, I sort of thought, man, I need a new Bible. There's something about this part of my Bible. It's just all messed up. We must have gone over this a few times in the past. <laughs> I get the, it, my, my Bible all the way to Genesis chapter 13. It's just all messed up, all beat up. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're here in chapter one of the book of Genesis. And we're at verse 26. Hallelujah. Verses one through 25 were just the build up. Give me a drum roll, please. God was building up to this moment. I'm pausing, not for drama, but I'm pausing to get us focused. I want you to, you've, you've learned the, the, the creation story before, I'm sure. But I want to make sure I do my job, amen? amen? All of the other things were being done to prepare things for man to prepare things for you. And in your life, all the stuff that was happening before you got there was preparing this world for you. And all the stuff that you've gone through since then has prepared you for this moment. And so you're here. Now, what are you going to do about it? Verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness. We could just stop right there. Let us make man. Now, think about everything that we've done up to this point. Think about all the wonderful things, all the preparation, making sure we have oxygen, making sure we have food, all those things, right? And then he says something completely different than what he's ever said before. Let us make man in what? Our image and in our likeness. That means man is special. That means God have a, has a special connection with you. That means God identifies with you. Amen? Hallelujah! Many of you have children. When that child comes out and it looks like you, you know how you feel. You know you love your child anyway, but boy, when they look like you, touches you some kind of way, amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 And he said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Let's make him like us. And let them have dominion, rulership, hallelujah, stewardship over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over what? All the earth, terra firma, and over every creeping thing. That means everything that moves, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything that moves, that creepeth or moves, meaning upon the earth. God built all the way up to this. And he said, let us now make man. But when you study this, it's easy to think, check and check and check. And okay, then we finally got to man. Okay, God's done. That's just not the way. It went down. Amen? Amen. He says, I'm going to make, let's make him in our image and give him dominion. He was not making this up as he went along. He was building to a crescendo of creation of the one that he would have that direct relationship with and identify with. Amen. This was the cherry on the top of the Sunday that he's been creating all along. 
and look at the plan that he had for man. He says, not only are we going to make him look like us, but we're giving him dominion. We're giving him authority. We're giving him stewardship. What an amazing position to be put in. This is why he created man last, because he needed to have all the things that he was to have dominion over present. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. What an amazing position to be put in. What an amazing honor to be given for God to create all of that, to do all that work and to turn it over to us. That tells you something about what he thinks of you. It tells you something about his plans for you. You you weren't part of the original creation, but you were part of a creation. And now here you are. Oh, hallelujah. I'm trying my best. And he gave us dominion over everything. And I don't want, this is not to be a point of emphasis, but he created, he made us, gave us dominion over everything except for the heavens. He did not give us dominion over the heavens. I know we're trying. I know, we, I know we're working on it, but he did not. Hey, you're on your own, buddy. You're on your own. Hallelujah. You can go all the way out there. I don't know if you make it back, but whatever happens, you're on your own. He gave us this. He gave us everything we need on this. But then some stuff happened. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, now, he did what he said he would do. Let's quickly look at verse 27 through 31. And so God created man, like he said he would, in his own image, like he said he would. And in the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish, meaning fill the earth and subdue it and have rulership or dominion over it over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth and God said behold I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat. The point here is that he gave you the food that you would need to sustain yourself. And that food itself would be self-sustaining, which is where the seed issue comes in. Amen? Amen. So God was planning on you being around for a while. Amen. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth along upon, upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat and Therefore, it was so. Verse 31, and God saw everything that he had made. And I want you to pay attention to what he says here. And behold, it was what? Very, Very good. Every other time he said what? It was good, meaning it was just the way he imagined it, just the way he planned it. And he's like, Mwah! I am so pleased. Puts a smile on my, just the way I pictured it. And yet once he creates man, he gives us dominion over everything. And he says, he looked at all that he created at the end of this sixth day. He saw it, what he had made. And he said, behold, it is very good. Amen, amen, amen. And the evening, the dusk, and then we had night, and then we had morning were the sixth day. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. He said, it is very good what I've created here. Amen, amen. Creation is now complete. And everything that was created is living in harmony with one another. The man and the animals are in harmony harmony with one another. They're not at odds with one another. Man and the plants or other aspects of nature are in harmony, amen? Symbiosis with one another. Not at odds like we are now. And 
if we keep reading, as all of this creation has been done and there is this harmony with man on top, as God ordained, if we keep reading, we will see that God continued to bless man. On the seventh day, he rested. And in doing so, beyond just resting for himself, he established a seven-day cycle for you Amen. with guaranteed rest. Amen. I said he created a seven-day cycle for you with guaranteed rest. He didn't create a 21-day cycle so you'd have to work for 18 days just to get three days rest, he knew that you would need rest more often than that. This is God. He ordained it. Amen? He sanctified it. He saw that it was good and he wanted you to therefore have it. Amen? Because he made you in his image. Oh, if that rest was good to me, then I expect it will be good to you. Hallelujah. So he gave us a weekly rhythm. Now, if you continue to read on, you will see that God created a special little place for man to focus his dwelling on as he filled the earth. He was thinking about man that way. And he also gave a little slice of creation when you showed up. You may not like it. You may not like the parents you were born to. You may not like the situation you were born into. You may not like the challenges you had to face. You may not like the color you were made. You may not like the gender you were made. But let me just tell you, God had a plan for you, and he was not surprised. And it's not deficient. And all the things that you've gone through, he knew it was coming. All the mistakes that you made, he knew you were going to make it. All the times that you fell down and had to get back up, he knew that was coming. The times you got in the muck and the mire and he had to pull you out of there. He was ready. There are no mistakes here, amen? amen. Hallelujah. God continued to pay attention to you. And he wants you to see it in creation. He created man for the dust. He breathed life into his nostrils. And he, he put all the plants that were pleasant to the eye and good for food. And he put them into this special garden eastward in Eden. Think about all that creation. Drum roll, please. Crescendo, man's here. All the angels said, man's here. And so God said, I'm going to create a special place for you. Like somebody you love is coming over and you create that special place. Can't wait for them to occupy everything they like just the way they like it. And he continued on. And if you pay attention, he says, you know, go ahead and tend this garden. Take care of it for me. And it's going to be easy. Sin came along and made it hard, but it's going to be easy. And if you keep on reading, you'll see that he said, you know what? Here's all some good stuff, but stay away from the bad stuff. He loves us just that much. Hallelujah. And if you keep on reading, you'll see, and this is for somebody out there, in particular, you'll see that God even cared about your emotional well-being. All right. All right. If he cared about it in creation, you better believe he still cares, amen? If he cared about it for Adam, you better believe he cares about it for you. He cared about your emotional well-being. He cared about your need for companionship. He didn't want you to be lonely. He didn't want you to feel left out. He didn't want you to feel like nobody cares about you. So he created, even he dealt with your need for companionship and partnership. That you need some help and you need somebody that's willing to be down with you. You need somebody that fits you, amen? God is thinking, think, he's thinking about you. 
Somebody feels like they don't have all these things. Somebody feels like they don't have their emotional life in order. Somebody is on their wits end. Somebody's just on the edge. Somebody doesn't feel like there's somebody that cares about them. Somebody doesn't have the companionship they want. Somebody doesn't have true partnership. That may be the case. But what you don't get to do when you leave here today is to think or believe that God doesn't care. Now, that doesn't mean everybody has to get married. Paul said, you'd be better off, ooh, the headaches that you could avoid. (laughs) You you need to know when you got it good. (laughs) If you're here to worship God, there's a whole lot of distractions, a whole lot of arguments, a whole lot of trying to please, a whole lot of stuff that you're going to have to deal with that you can avoid, but... But that's not for everybody. Matter of fact, that's just for a few of us with that gift. But God cares. So as Satan whispers in your ear during those difficult moments and try to make you think you're alone, when he whispers in your ear and try to make you think that God doesn't care about those little things, they're not little to God. And when he created man, look at all the that he attended to, all the things that he cared about. And this is all part of creation. I hope you hear me. So man inherited, he was gifted a pristine planet and an awesome situation, amen? I mean, God outdid himself. It was pristine and it was willing to cooperate with man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, this is what God wanted for us. But we all know that we were born on the other side of sin. Amen. Hallelujah. We didn't get to have that pristine opportunity. But let me just tell you, we would have blown it too. Before we judge Adam or Eve or both. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But because of we had this pristine situation, this pristine uh, planet, because sin did enter in, man's stewardship that God ordained him to has turned out to be far less than ideal. We think about this as global warming. We talk about all the things that we've done to sort of damage the planet. Yes, That's real ecological, amen, in our times, ecological news, amen, ecological events and happenings. That is all true, but understand this was bound to happen. It was bound to become that way. It was frankly inevitable because of our pride, because of our selfishness, because of our greed, and because of our short-sightedness that came as a result of sin, this was going to happen. If you think about the first sin ever, it's because we had everything and we wanted more. We had everything given to us by God that cared about us like this, and we couldn't sit with that. He did all of this, and all somebody had to do was whisper a few little nothings, and we turned on the God that gave us all of it. You think we won't burn a little hole in the ozone layer? You don't think we will amass wealth as you know using fossil fuels you better believe we will that seed was planted a long time ago we were not going to be good stewards of what God gave us and we also don't treat one another the way that we should it started in the very beginning We don't treat the earth the way we should. We don't treat the animals the way we should. We don't treat the oceans the way we should. We don't treat the animals the way we should. We don't treat each other the way we should. Why? We started out with pristine and wonderful, but sin. So don't be surprised about why things are going the way they're going. And don't think that people are going to somehow have self-restraint. They will build ships to try to go somewhere else before they'll stop. They can't, they can't get out of their own way because it doesn't matter how much they have, they want more. 
And it doesn't matter how much they have unto themselves. People can starve. People can die. People cannot be able to breathe. People can be damaged. All of sort of the, uh, the glaciers can fall down. But I want mine. I make my money off of this. So I want mine. Don't be surprised. That's just the way sin looks. We have so much everybody could be fine. But it's not going to happen like that. It's not going to happen like that. We, as soon as sin came into the world, selfishness, pride, greed, you had everything. And all we could think about is the one thing we didn't have. It's in our DNA. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now for the same reason that man has not been a good steward over this earth and frankly has not treated each other well, uh, your life often gets messy, does it not? Your life has often been hard, has often been difficult, right? Has often been painful, has often been disappointing, sometimes lonely, amen? And you can wonder sometimes, do you really matter? This is all because of sin. God did not plan it that way, but he knew it was coming. And so he had a plan and a solution. And this is why Jesus came. And this is why Jesus lived. And this is why Jesus got on the cross. And this is why he did not get down from the cross. Because we needed it. Amen. Amen. And so God wants you to know your creation journey, all the drum roll up to your arrival and your journey since then. Amen. Amen. That it matters as much to God as the creation mattered to him. Amen. Your life, your arrival matters as much to God. Your journey on this earth matters as much to God. Your calling, your reason for being, the needs that you have matter as much to God. You see the detailed work he put into creation. He didn't leave any stone uncovered. But he understands that you were born into a sinful world. So he's ready to meet you at the point of your need. He's ready to pick you up when you fall. And no matter how many times you've fallen, no matter how many wrongs you've done, you don't get an out. He still wants to use you. Hallelujah. That's right. Ah, oh, you don't get that. He still wants to use you. He hasn't changed his mind. You may not like your assignment. I know you may not like your assignment. Oh, God, you created me. That's beautiful. Oh, you know what? My hairs under my head are numbered. That's wonderful. Oh, you had all these plans for me, all right? You had all of that. But I don't like your plan. I don't like the situation you put me in. I don't like the people around me. I don't like the assignment you gave me. Well, can I just tell you, uh, uh, join the club. Welcome to the party. I can just give you a few. Jeremiah, would you rather have Jeremiah's job? Would you rather have that? We're talking about your creation meaning something. And what I'm getting at here is how you can undo that in your own mind by rejecting God. Oh, that's great. I'm created. But for a reason, you're not just here to take up space. So we can't just talk about creation until we get into the reason for creation. Hallelujah. The reason you were created is so you can do something that God needed you to do, that he gifted you for, that he created you, designed you, customized for. Customized. Oh, but I don't like my situation. I don't like my upbringing. I don't like my environment. I don't like my color. I don't like my assignments. So as you're thinking those thoughts, just think about Jeremiah. The crying prophet wrote all the lamentations. How would you like to have your whole life devoted from a young age? God telling you, this is what you got to do. And don't you dare worry about their faces and have nobody listen to you. You have had children that won't listen to you sometimes. and You know how much grief that causes you. 
How about being a prophet doing exactly what God told you to do, saying exactly what God told you to say, saying exactly the way he told you to say it, and to have people prefer false prophets over you. To have not one time for people to listen to you. you would you rather have Jeremiah's job? You may even think you want Moses' job. I'd rather... I don't want my assignment. I don't like the little creation you made for me, God. I like that person. Would you, we think of Moses as this big old person because he's mentioned so much and so venerated in the Bible. But you might even think you want the first part of his life. But would you want your life threatened like his was? It's easy to forget that. You want to be born into that? You want to be born into killing all the children and for, for your parents to have to hide you? So you might like the first 40 years of his life after he was saved. But I don't think you'd want the second 40 when he was running for his life. Amen. Amen. It wasn't all that easy over there in Midian. It wasn't all that easy. Or when he got to the and when he got to the burning bush, can I just tell you that wasn't easy? You think that was easy going back and forth and back and forth with Pharaoh? That wasn't fun. You think, yes, we had the miracle of the crossing of the Red Sea, but you want to be Moses trying to lead people that don't want to be led with your back against the water and the biggest army in the world coming at you? No, 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 no. And you sure don't want the last 40 years. You sure don't want that. You sure don't want to have to go through the desert for 40 years that you shouldn't have had to. You sure don't want to have to go through the desert with God creating manna that people don't appreciate. You sure don't want to have to go through that. You don't want that assignment. You don't want Mary's and Joseph's assignment. How about being entrusted with the Savior of all of mankind, but you don't have a place at the end? And you got a, Jesus was born into Nazareth. Why not a kingly place? Why not at least Jerusalem? You don't want to be the one that the whole community is looking say look at her she's pregnant already and they're not even married yet you don't want to be Joseph having to keep your mouth shut because God told you to you don't want to have to you don't want that assignment oh but you don't think you want your assignment I can keep going oh there's more examples Jonah didn't like his assignment because he had to preach to his arch enemies would you prefer that assignment Oh, there's more. I could keep going. I could keep going. Would you prefer to have Ruth's assignment? Oh, it sounds good in the end, but how would you like to lose everything and be in a land that's not your own and have to learn customs that are not your own? Oh, it ended up okay, but that's because Ruth took her situation and embraced it. She says, okay, I'm down with you. This is where God put me. Your, your people will be your people, my people, and your God will be my God, and I will follow the instructions as you give them to me. And I, he, she didn't know Boaz was waiting on the other end of her obedience. But she accepted her assignment. I'm saying that you were no accident. I'm saying that you were highly anticipated. You were highly anticipated. You, you, even I was highly anticipated. God gave my mother my first and middle name in a dream. You are to name him Michael Eugene. Those two names mean who is like God and seeker of the truth. At least the second part is right. <laughs> I am a seeker of the truth. And hopefully when I'm done, God will say that I was some kind of like him, that I had some of his traits, amen, that he's proud of that boy. Look at him. Looks just like me, doesn't he? Hallelujah. <laughs> God wants you to know that you matter. He wants you to know that every part of your journey, every minute, every hour, Big challenges, the small ones. He's paying attention. He cares. He's gone through all of these three messages to try to tell you that. You matter just as much as it seemed, if you pay close attention, 
to matter to him how he put together creation, the order that he put it in. So think about your life and all of the, the situation you were born into, the things that you've gone through, the things that you've learned, the good way or the hard way. All of those things brought you to now. All of those things brought you to this moment. God wants us to understand who he is and who he is toward us. Somebody may be watching now or somebody may be watching this as a recording on Facebook or YouTube or maybe somebody, and please share this message with anyone that's feeling down, that anyone that's feeling alone, anyone that doesn't understand that God pays attention to all the details, anyone that thinks their situation is so messed up that it can't be recovered, anyone that thinks that they're in it all along and God doesn't care, anyone that thinks that they've done so many bad things, God knows you were born on this side of sin. Please, I hope I've done my job. I hope I've convey to you all I am as a vessel all I'm doing is being obedient right now because somebody needs to know that they matter just as much as all of creation you're not just a little dot to God you're the only dot that had the, the plans that he had for you you're a hundred percent of the person that he had in mind when he thought about what he wanted to do through you. So do it with reckless abandon. Go for it. Swing for the fences of being you. Don't you waste no time looking over the fence. Don't you waste no time wanting somebody else's dream. Don't you waste your time wanting somebody else's gifts. Don't you waste your time wanting somebody else's assignment. Don't you waste your time and te basically telling God he was wrong. Be grateful that he created you in the first place. Be grateful that he was excited for your coming. Be grateful that he hasn't le left you and he'll never leave you for nor forsake you. Be grateful. Amen. Amen. God had all these three messages just to tell you. He loves you. He cares down to the details. Your emotional well-being, whether you have people around you that you can communicate with, whether you have folks that are down with you and are willing to partner with you, whether you, he cares about your needs. He doesn't just want you to eat and breathe air. He cares about your life. He cares about your desire. He cares about, he made you. And he tried through these through messages to show you if you now know the wonderment, the, uh, the majesty, the amazement of creation, take all of that, package it up, and put it in your heart and call it God. Because he is trying to reveal his character and his heart. And I hope we've been successful. And to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God.